I'd like to talk to you today about the results of the RATE project. RATE stands for Radioisotopes in the Age of the Earth, and I've entitled this talk, and this is the first time I've given this talk, by the way, uh, Thousands, Not Billions. And that's kind of a takeoff on a Carl Sagan statement, billions and billions of years ago. But it's thousands, not billions. But at this point, we are finishing eight years of research for this research project, studying the radioisotopes and the age of the Earth. This was one of the most, and has continued to be, one of the most difficult problems for creationists to deal with because it seems to most of us that there is a lot of authority based in estimates of the age of the Earth, particularly rocks, uh, based on radioisotope dating. And many people have thought about this problem. Individual creationists have worked on it, but no one has really made breakthroughs in this field until this project came along. And we grouped the number of really leading scientists in creationism together over the last eight years to try to work on this problem. And the Lord has provided fantastic answers to this, and I want to be able to share this with you today. This is the rate group. I'll go through real quickly. From the front row on the left is Dr. John Barmgardner, Ph.D. in geophysics, recently retired from Los Alamos National Labs, now working full-time at ICR. Uh, there's yours truly next to him on his left, your right. And then the bearded one is Russ Humphreys, Ph.D. in physics, recently from Sandia National Laboratories, and he is now retired from there and working for ICR full-time. On the far right is Dr. Um, uh, Gene Chaffin, a uh, physicist, uh, teaches at Bob Jones University. Behind him in the second row is Dr. Don DeYoung, a physicist at Grace College and Seminary in Winona Lake, Indiana. Right in the middle in the second row is Dr. Steve Austin, Ph.D. in Geology at ICR. Uh, his right is Dr. Andrew Snelling, Ph.D. in Geology. Uh, his specialty is in igneous geology, that is, the kind of rocks that come from magma. Dr. Austin's uh, especially is in sedimentary geology. Uh, in the back left corner is Dr. John Morris, the president of ICR. Uh, to his left is Dr. Ken Cumming, the dean of our graduate school and in charge of the overview of research associated with the graduate school. The tallest one in the back is, Dr. is Bill Hoche. He's um, our technician, master degree uh, technician in geology. He does a lot of the legwork out in the field and also a lot of the sample preparation in our laboratory. And in the far right corner is Dr. Uh, Boyd, uh, uh, I forgot his first name, Dr. Steve Boyd a theologian from the Master's College and added a really special pro a part of our project in doing a full statistical study on the poetic and narrative portions of Scripture showing that Genesis, the, the parts of Genesis that talk about creation and the flood are narrative and should be taken literally and historically, not in an allegorical sense. We'll talk about that a little bit. This is the book that will be coming out this fall. Uh, you saw one on the table back there probably. That's our Rate 1 book, you might say. It came out at the end of the first three years of the project in which we had spent three years preparing what we were going to do. And we laid out the proposals for the research that we were going to have. And we published that book saying this is what we're going to do. And we spent then five years, which ends this year. And this book then is reporting on the results of the full, year, a full five years of research that we did in the last five years. It's a uh, slightly different color scheme, so you can recognize it from the first. It's got a volume two at the top to help uh, you identify it as well. And you'll notice down here in the title, the subtitle, it's Results of a Young Earth Creationist Research Initiative. The first one just said a Young Earth Creationist Research Initiative. Okay, this project started out and really was dealing with a significant problem. And it had to do with whether the earth is thousands of years old, as the Bible would teach or teaches, or is it billions of years old, as the conventional scientific community would teach and believe. And the age issue really says that evolution requires long periods of time to operate, if it's even going to operate. And what concerns us most is that some Christians have accepted the evolutionary idea. And it's a major compromise 
and trying to put the long ages together, which would allow for evolution if it could occur, which I don't think even with an infinite amount of time evolution could occur, but at least it gives it some uh, credibility. The total effect is, is exactly what Mike Riddle said during his last hour here, and that the effect is to degrade the reliability of Scripture. Because if you can't believe in the world that we can see, how can you believe in things that are spiritual that you cannot see? Does that sound like a familiar statement? That came from Christ himself. Well, the question then, is the earth really old or is it young? There's some basic assumptions of radioisotope dating. And by the way, radioisotope dating uh, really only started about 100 years ago when uh, radioactivity was discovered in about 1990, or uh, 1890, 1895, uh, and then developed over the next 100 years or so. But there are three basic assumptions when you go to, do, uh, to, to use radioisotope decay as a dating method. The first one is that there was no initial concentration of a daughter element. Now, I have to define some terms here. There are something called parent elements and daughter elements. A parent element is the radioisotope that is unstable and is going to decay into some other materials called uh, daughter elements. For example, uranium decaying into lead. The uranium would be the parent. The lead would be the daughter. It's also assumed that this decay occurs at a constant decay rate, that it's always been the same as we observe today. And finally, that this process is in a closed system, that the amount of parent element has not been added to or subtracted by other processes than radioactive decay. And the same thing is true of the, of the daughter elements, that there's no such thing as diffu of, uh, diffusion or removal of material, contamination, all that sort of thing. It's a very closed system. Well, it turns out you can't prove any of these things, and you have to assume them. You can get some evidence to try to make that less likely, but you never know for sure because it happened in the past, and we have no way of knowing for sure. As opposed to those basic assumptions, the rate group developed some hypotheses, and these are just a few of the hypotheses that we started with. Uh, the first one, which was truly a hypothesis when we started, and it was because the group itself, when we first got together, had some preconceived ideas as to what we might be facing, and suggested that in order to be able to reconcile the thousands of years of the Bible with the billions of years that current conventional dating techniques develop, you would have to have some kind of a change in the decay process, or the rate at which the, the decay occurred. And this became known as accelerated decay. So we assumed that we needed, and we needed to do experiments to be able to try to determine whether this was true or not. It was truly a hypothesis. It wasn't even a theory. It was made almost a conjecture. Is it possible that, ex that decay has, has changed in the past and been speeded up in some way? Now, you may not realize how controversial that is. The rate of radioactive decay in the general scientific community is assumed to be constant period, and there's no way it could change, because observations generally show, uh, until quite recently, that the decay rates are much less, uh, have changed much less than 1%, even under extreme conditions, like high temperature and high pressures and various chemicals, all kinds of things. So the, to even suggest that decay rates have been changed or accelerated was very, very controversial. We also hypothesized that maybe some of the daughter elements have, were primordial. That means that there was some uh, daughter element, like lead there to start with, that maybe you didn't have to start at zero uh, with the daughter. Maybe, maybe God created the elements with a, a certain amount of uranium and a lot of lead to start with. and. Uh, Therefore, this might solve the whole problem. You might be able to kind of offset the clock or give it, a, give it a starting point so that we wouldn't have to worry about all these billions of years. And then thirdly, we assume or uh, we hypothesize that radioactive processes have produced evidence of accelerated decay. Now, we, at the point that we did this, we had no idea whether we would actually find this evidence. We were going to go looking for it to see if, in fact, that was the case. Now, I can't tell you how uh, much we had to step out in faith to be able to do this because we recognized how controversial this was. We even adopted a portion of Scripture, which I'll quote a portion at the end.